Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. We believe today's message is going to strengthen and encourage you. So get your Bibles ready as Pastor Jeremy File is teaching today's message. You and I are empowered by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I said we are empowered by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Every answer that you need for every situation you face can be found in being led by the Holy Spirit. You see, if we are going to walk in what God has provided for us as New Covenant, New Testament Christians, then we better understand that it's going to be by the Spirit of God and not by our flesh. And I read that to you on Sunday, the word to Zerubbabel and the word to accelerate and each individual here is it's not by your might, it's not by your power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord. It's by His Spirit. Say it, by His Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Have you ever heard this one before? Well, I've heard it, and I've heard this one butchered before. I heard a guy preaching this one time. I don't even remember who it was now, so it doesn't matter. What matters is what they're saying. Somebody told me, you talking about other preachers, you got a beef with them? I don't have any beef. I, I just listen to what they say. And every guy that, that preaches truth, I tell you what, he's my friend. Amen? But when someone reads this and says, now that last part of the verse does not really imply. You just went and butchered it. If you look in your Bible, in the margin of the Bible I have up here, it has a little notation, and it says, that part is not in all manuscripts. What part? This says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But I'm here to let you know that that is from God. And I'll show you that in just a minute if you hang on. I'll just prove it to you. But I've got to tell you this right now. The no condemnation lifestyle is for those that walk after the Spirit. You see, for someone to block that out, they're saying there's no more condemnation if you at one time received Jesus or say that you're a Christian. It's not that way. By the way, condemnation is not a feeling. And I always go back to this, and I mean, there's people that I love even close to me. They say, well, I, I think it is. Well, I'm just letting you know, if you study your Bible, you, what you're going to find out, if you look up that word condemnation in the Greek, it's a passing of sentence. It's like the gavel drops. So what you need to live like is knowing that when you face the judge of the universe, he's not going to drop the gavel if you're in Christ Jesus and say guilty. But then I love this because the Holy Spirit tells us this is what this looks like. You've got to walk not after the flesh, but you have to walk after the Spirit. Everyone say, after the Spirit. After the Spirit. So what does that mean? Well, we'll talk more about it as we read. Let's keep reading. Go to verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Notice the past tense that's used here. <laughs> I'm already free. Somebody, who do you think you are? You act like you don't sin all the time. We're all sinners saved by grace. Now, that's a partial truth. I've sinned like every other person. I had to repent, call out to God, turn from that lifestyle, and call on the Lord to save me from myself and my sins. And thank God he did. But when he did that, he didn't now make me twice the son of hell and say, now you're going to heaven and you're still just sinning all the time. No, he put a new nature on the inside of me. And now the thing that used to be okay is no longer okay. If you're a sinner, all you know is sin. You don't feel bad about that. No conviction, no anything. You don't have the Spirit of God on the inside of you. But in Christ, the Holy Spirit will convict you now of things that you used to not be convicted of. And if you don't have that conviction on the inside of you, then you have to yourself doubt if you were really born again. Because everybody I've ever met that's truly been born again is different. Now, just because you're different when you call on the Lord, it doesn't mean that you don't have to stoke the fire and the gift of God on the inside of you. And if you don't keep it stirred up, who are you to not say, who are you to say that no one could lose out on this when the Bible says the dog has returned to his vomit, the pig has returned to the mud. That's in New Testament and Old Testament. God never takes your will away. 
That's why every morning, see, yeah, like I said, you ought to say, Lord, I'm yours. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I'm willing to do whatever you call me to do. Amen? But there's a law that operates by the Spirit. And it's a law of freedom. Somebody say freedom. freedom. No longer does sin have to jerk your chain. I could prove that two chapters before, but that's not my assignment tonight. But I will say, Romans chapter 6 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Couldn't be more specific. You haven't got your immortal body yet, so it's not talking about an eternity. You know, I've asked people, do you believe you'll be sinning when you get to heaven? Well, no. Well, you got an immortal body. I would hope not. But the Bible says, let not sin reign in your mortal body. Meaning it's up to you. How am I going to do that, preacher? By his spirit. You're going to see it spelled out in the Bible. Look at verse 3, Romans 8. Aren't you glad to be at church tonight? Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. I wonder if sin had that feeling of condemnation. You see, it means right there, passing of sentence. He condemned it. He damned it, is another way of saying that. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law, pay close attention now, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Nobody says that one's not in the manuscripts. That's why I believe in verse 1 it's there because it's there in verse 4. Nobody argues about it. It's there. So if it's there in verse 4, how many think? It's probably likely there in verse number 1. Okay, hadn't convinced some of you, but that's okay. The truth that you've got to get tonight is this. The law demands righteousness, and I've taken you through this many times. You've told a lie. You've stolen something. You've lusted after someone at some point in your life, right? You've done these things. You've broken God's law. If you broke one part, you broke it all. You're a lawbreaker. And God doesn't let lawbreakers into heaven. Well, the righteousness that the law demands is fulfilled when we do not walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So what does this mean? If you do whatever your flesh wants, there's no promise right here in the word that the righteousness of the law is fulfilled. It's fulfilled when you walk after the Spirit. And I think before we go tonight, I'm going to go to another couple of places in the Bible where it talks about this. And the Bible paints a very clear map. I I called it in my notes a checklist that we can look at. And I'm going to ask out loud for a response, and I think you already know. I was looking at this and I thought, I sure don't want to diss anyone or, or you know, you act like I think you're dumb or anything. That's not where I'm going with this. But we already know what it means to walk after the Spirit. It's just Christians like to kind of play dumb. Yeah, what does that mean exactly? Oh, you'll know tonight before we leave. <laughs> and that's good because the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in us when we don't walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device sit around and feed the flesh all day, it's going to then tomorrow make demands on you. Whatever you feed grows. This isn't mind over matter. This is truth. You feed your spirit, man, you're going to grow. You read your Bible and you pray every day and you'll grow, grow, grow. I think I heard that when I was a wee little kid. I think I did in children's church. And did you know that was truth? Got down to my little soul singing that. I Whoever was my teacher, I know Brother Tim was at some point, but whoever was my teacher, think of that. They left an eternal impression upon my soul by teaching me that song. Read your Bible, pray every day, you'll grow. You'll grow. Did you know that's not the flesh growing? That's the spirit growing. Yeah. And why is that important? Because I've got to walk after the spirit and not the flesh. If I want to be free of condemnation when I face the judge... Right? 
If I want to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law, I better be minding the spirit and not the flesh. Are you following me? So they that are after the flesh, those walking after the flesh, their mind is constantly on things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, their mind is on the things of the spirit. Now, is your Bible spirit coded? Is it of the spirit of God? All scriptures inspired of God. Do I need to remind you of that scripture in Timothy? It's spiritual. Therefore, when you open this Bible, it's not just reading another book. I, I, I know some people, they love reading, and they'll read, 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 but you get the Bible out and they're bored with it. Isn't that amazing? Why? Because the flesh doesn't mind reading a romance novel or some kind of fiction book like that. Maybe it's not a romance novel, just something that, that gets you all stirred up. But then you read this, and it's like, oh, I'm getting sleepy. Why is that? Because it's the flesh. Not wanting this. Because this isn't just words on paper. It doesn't feed the flesh. It feeds the spirit. It's spirit-coded. You got that? So you mind the things of the spirit. What, what does that mean? You're following the Holy Spirit. Don't you love how the Bible makes it so clear? Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death. Wow. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because... The carnal mind is enmity against God. That word means hostility or an enemy of. The carnal mind makes you an enemy against God. Now, my friend, you don't want to take your last breath thinking, oh, I'm going to meet the king of kings. He's so loving. He's so gracious. It's going to be wonderful. But yet the way you think is against him. That's a dangerous spot to be in. Well, why does it make you the enemy of God? Well, the Bible says in Romans 8, 7, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see, carnal thoughts, fleshy thoughts, are thoughts that aren't submitted to God. They're not submitted to God's way of handling things or looking at things. We have a huge problem in America right now. Because so many people view things from a philosophical, so-called intellectual point of view. But it's not biblical. For something to be scriptural, you got to have scripture. So if you're going to think like God, you got to have some Bible behind that thought process. See, people, they don't even understand or think. They just, they hear somebody say something that sounds good to them and say, that's what I believe. Well, why don't you believe the Bible? you got to believe the Bible. Now, there are people in this world, and I think about this one thing about politics. They get to a point of view and the way they view things, such as, I'll just be blunt, and they say, well, I'm a Republican. But they got there in a different route than I got there. The only reason I would even vote Republican is because there's actually some still in that party that will listen to a man of God and will actually abide by the word of God. That's it. How do you approach politics? According to the word. Does that make people mad? Yes. Republicans and Democrats both. Anyone not subject to the law of God is going to get angry when you are subject to the law of God. So you're just going to have to make a decision right now. Right now, while you're right here in this friendly group right here, that you're going to think like God even if it makes everybody mad. Because if you keep looking at other people, you're going to be trapped by carnal thoughts all your life. Wrong thinking leads to hostility and opposition to God. There are a lot of people that meant business and they believed with all their heart that Jesus was Lord and that God raised him from the dead. They confessed it with their mouth, believed it in their heart. They were born again according to the scriptures. But if you don't keep this mind renewed, it'll slip into enmity and hostility and opposition to God. And if you're not careful, your mind, see, is a part of your soul. You're a three-part being. You've got a spirit. That's the born-again, brand-new part of you. Amen. You've got a soul that's your mind, will, and emotions, and you have a flesh suit on. Now, whichever one your mind goes to and teams up with is what you're going to yield to. So if you don't renew your mind and think spiritual thoughts, you're going to think carnal thoughts, and you're going to think hostile to God with the placard Christian on your life. 
You see, the most hostility I have faced has not come from pagans. It's come from people that I call church boys and girls that have had just enough of God to be dangerous. They have just a tiny bit of submission to God in their life, and then the rest is lawless. They're the arrogant, pompous kind that like to oppose the move of God. But I can't worry about them. I've got to think about me because wrong thinking for me will lead me to be hostile and oppose God and what he's wanting to do in my life. So see, how am I going to take possession? How am I going to live by his spirit if I think opposite of God? Just ask yourself that for a minute. So one of the first ways to live by his spirit is to control your thought life. And this is every one of us are in this battle. Every one of us. Look at your neighbor and say, even you. Look at your other neighbor and say, even you. We're all in this together. You've got to control your thought life. There'll be times the enemy will try to come and bombard you, tell you, you're not good enough, you're not going to make it. I mean, just on and on. Look what they're saying about you. Look what they're doing. Look what they're saying. You can't go by that. That's going by the carnal mind. You say, now I thank you, Lord, my mind is renewed. I'm going to think how you think. If there's something in my life that doesn't line up, reveal it to me, Father, and I'll change the way I think. This is part of you submitting to him as being your Lord. Is you say, you are Lord of my mind. I can't allow thoughts to stay here. I can't always control the thoughts that come because, as I've heard and said to you before, many of the thoughts you have are not your own. Thoughts come, but you're responsible for your own soul. You can't just let them stay here. You've got to take authority over every evil thought, and you've got to make it obey Christ. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have LifeLinks. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for LifeLinks. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. You just live according to the flesh, do what you want. You will not please God. Which means we can't just set on default. We're going to have to be intentional about this. I always think of that. You know, no one ever won a championship and they ask them, how'd you do it? I have no clue. I just rolled out of bed and I'm here. There's never been anywhere, anyone anywhere, anytime that won, that had that speech. I have no idea. I just, you know, I woke up and they said, here, the trophy's yours. No, there's a whole lot you didn't see that happened. Right? But the point is this. You, you don't escape this flesh and the demands it wants to put on you just by just being you and the beautiful you you are. you got to have a renewed way of thinking. <laughs> Verse 9. This is good. Are you, are you enjoying this? Yes. But you are not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. If so be... The Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, really hone in here. Verse 11. This is where I was trying to go here. And, of course, I've got a lot more to go. But verse 11, Romans 8. If the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. How does he do this? How does he do it? Everybody look at the screen. This is not a trick Bible. How does he do it? By his spirit that dwells in you. So you're made alive by his spirit on the inside. Glory to God. And see, if you're trapped just to the natural, you're never going to get this. It's by his spirit that we are made alive. Therefore, brethren, verse 12 says, and you know anytime brethren's in the Bible, it's written to you, New Testament, Christian, amen, blood bought. Say, that's me. me. Therefore, you, you're not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. That tells me something. The flesh loves to make demands. 
Oh, just, just forget church. It ain't a big deal. Do what you want. Yet I can tell you right now, I get testimonies of people that come in here feeling weak and strength rises up on the inside of them. Why? Because strength comes from your spirit. By his spirit in your spirit. God, the number one way he speaks to you is to your spirit. If you have ears that are dull of hearing, then he has to come out here and get somebody to warn you. Now, the amazing thing is he uses me. If I'm your pastor here tonight, he uses me to echo what he's already supposed, what you're already supposed to be hearing on the inside of your spirit, man. That's why when people come here, they say things like, Pastor, you have our house bugged? Of course not. That's ridiculous. I would never do such a thing anyway. That's absurd. But the Holy Spirit is in you, and the Holy Spirit is in me, and when I yield to him and pray in the Holy Spirit, and then I get up here and yield to him as a, as a vessel, he's going to speak exactly what you're going through in detail. Well, somebody told Pastor. No, nobody told me. In fact, you can ask those closest to me many times. I think after I preach, I'm like, oh, I wasn't thinking about those, that situation I heard about. Oh, they're going to think I was talking directly about them. See, if I operated by the flesh, there's a lot I wouldn't do up here. But there's times the Holy Spirit's been on me, and he's like, confront this, confront this. I don't know who it's for. Just confront it, confront it, confront it, confront it. And there was one season I confronted it for like six straight services, and then that, after that sixth one, I went back to my office, and before I could even close the door to my office, the Holy Spirit said, it's done. I've never done it. I've never touched that specific thing again since that night. Because I was, and I don't know who that, I don't know all the, I don't have to see it all in the natural to understand. I just follow the Holy Ghost. He knows. I trust him. Do you trust him? Well, you're here, so I believe you have a level of trust in him. And you know what? He's speaking to you right now. You're not a debtor to live according to the flesh. Well, we're not to live after the flesh. No, no, no. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. Now, this scripture's always stuck out to me, and I've preached this before, but you need to hear it again. Because you're all going to die. So this can't be talking about just natural death. If Jesus tarries his coming, not everyone in this room is going to die. Let me back up. Let me, let me retract. i got to watch my words close. Because there are those that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. You'll never see death. Amen. I'm believing for uh, the majority of all of you to be there. But if Jesus tarries his coming, we're all going to die. I mean, everyone born 150 years ago, if they've all died. You can't say, well, they all lived after the flesh. There were some born 150 years ago that were powerful men and women of God that didn't live by the flesh. They lived by the spirit. So this isn't talking about physical death. This is talking about spiritual death. If you live after the flesh, you just do whatever you want. You're going to die spiritually. But if you, through the spirit, oh, did you see that? We already read the verse a while ago that said, by his spirit. This one says, through the spirit. Mm. Mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So see, there are people that have given their life to Christ and they can't seem to break free of certain sins. And they want to know why. I'm telling you, I'm ringing the bell why tonight. Because they've never done anything through the spirit. They're trying to approach it th solely through the flesh. And it ain't going to work. Self-discipline is not going to get you free of everything. Willpower alone is not going to get you through everything. It's going to have to be through the Spirit. <laughs> through the Spirit of God. Woo, praise God. The only way you're going to be able to put the works of the flesh to death is through the Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, I got a question then. How much time do you spend with him on the regular? How much time does he have of your life on the daily basis? How much time do you yield your tongue to praying in other tongues on a daily basis? Don't get mad or convicted in here and say, oh, you're condemning. I'm not condemning you. Hopefully you're convicted because there's nobody in here that spends too much time praying in the Holy Ghost. There's not anybody that exists. Well, they pray way too much in the Holy Spirit. I mean, you got to think about the Apostle Paul. He went to the Corinth church, and they, he had to correct them because they were wild about speaking in tongues. And he said, hold up, I speak in tongues more than all of you. That's a lot. <laughs> He's praying in tongues all the time. If he does that, and he didn't lie, by the way. That wouldn't be in Scripture in a lie. The Holy Spirit never inspired a lie. Are you following me tonight? 
So he's praying in the Spirit. Why? Through the Spirit, he was able to mortify. That means to kill the deeds, the works of the body. Guess what? That's the way to life, through the Spirit. Are you out there? Are you alive tonight? <laughs> Again, when you feed the flesh, it's going to make demands. It can jerk your chain all around. But through the Spirit, you can put that to death and break free. I will tell you this. The only way to break free is by the Spirit of God. Galatians chapter 5. Say, thank God for the Word. You're getting some good spiritual meat tonight? Here's what it says in Galatians 5 verse 16, King James Version. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, lust here means the desires of the flesh. So the flesh is going to try to place demands. I told you if you feed it, it tries to jerk your chain. But this verse tells you that if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, you'll be free when the flesh is like, oh, come on. Why don't you just drink alcohol one night? It ain't going to hurt nothing. Just one night. You know, there, there are people in this city, and I love them, but they've lost loved ones due to drunk driving, and they're on an all-out campaign against it. And I talked to this individual, and I said, you know, I could help you with this. I, I'm a preacher, and I preach against alcohol. I'm known for that. He said, I've heard about it. I said, I come from a biblical perspective. See, this is also kind of what I was talking about politics earlier. This is a little bit different area, but the reason I'm against drinking is because the Bible's against it. That, I mean, I'm a simple man. Now, here's what people do. Well, I know good Christians that drank all their life. There are men of God that wrote powerful books, and sometimes, Pastor, you've even quoted them. They drank. That doesn't make it right. Well, my, my people, he drank all the time. Well, I'm sorry. That doesn't make it right. He's not the standard. I, I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to walk in the Spirit. But here's the point. No one ever lost their life. No one ever lost their spouse due to drunkenness and all that that causes, without drinking one. So you headed off way up the stream and you ain't got to worry about anything. Now why would a Christian fight for the right to walk according to the flesh? Well, that does conclude today's television broadcast, but if you would like to hear more from Pastor Jeremy File, we invite you to head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find every sermon that Pastor Jeremy has preached for your convenience. If you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If you're not from Amarillo, we would still love to hear from you. You can email us at info at accelerate.church.cc or give us a call. We want to know how can we pray for you? Where are you watching and tuning in from? We are so glad that you tuned in with us today.